everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on optimizing performance with localization. My name is Izzy Ganova and I'm a creative specialist at Foundry. Today we'll be taking a look at localization workflows and some use cases for it. We're going to be covering what localization is and why it can be useful to you, how to set up and manage localization within New Canuc Studio, as well as show you some Python examples to highlight the extended Python API and show you some of the things you can do with it. First, I'm going to go over what localization is and how you can use it to your advantage. Um, as I, and I'm sure a lot of you have experienced, loading files from remote servers can be very slow and very painful, uh, which gets even worse for slow networks. Um, this gets especially troublesome with a constant demand for high resolution. So now we have 4K and 8K on a regular basis, and reading files that large off network can be quite the hassle. That said, even if you're working at HD, localization can still be of use to you. So Nuke has the ability to cache files locally. It creates a local copy of your file, which is linked to the file server. And this can help in the fight against heavy local network traffic um, and your reduced latency when you have those slowdowns on your network. One thing to mention, you don't have to cache everything locally. You can just focus on the files that you know are particularly heavy and you can be selective and control it on a file by file basis as well as point to a specific directory. And these are things we're going to be covering a little later on. So again, localized files are only copies. You can clear them once you're done with them. They're only there to help speed up your work while you need them and no changes made directly to the files on the network. So I'm going to jump in a new script real quick now. Um, and I'm going to walk you through setting up localization. So first we're going to go to preferences. Um, and we'll navigate to performance, localization. And the first thing we see here is the mode. So we have three options. We have on, manual, and off. So for on, um, Nuke checks for updates for all localization policies and automatically localizes files set to on or from auto-localized path. For manual, um, Nuke checks for updates and prompts you to update the clips manually. Um, and for off, uh, no source clips are localized. This is regardless of their localization policy. One thing to also mention is that the current localization mode is also visible on the bottom of your screen. So bottom right corner right here, which is really handy to just keep track of what is going on. So next up is the localization policy. This is where you get more granular control over what you want localized. And this is going to be the policy for any new files that you bring in. So already existing read nodes, you're going to have to change manually. Say for all of these read nodes that we have in our scene, um, the localization policy is going to stay unchanged. Um, and for any uh, new files that we bring in, uh, they're going to inherit it from right here. Um, we then have our um, auto localize from path. So this is a directory uh, where you can point nuke to look for files um, and localize them automatically if they live within that directory. Um, so for the minute, I'm going to change this to from auto localized path. Um, and I'm going to grab this path right here um, that I'll be using later on. And then we have the localized to path. So this is the path where the local copies are going to be created. Um, and this is a good opportunity to mention that localization can be quite useful outside of a studio environment as well. So if, for example, you're a freelancer and you're working off a big drive, you can localize to your fastest SSD you, you have um, just for the project. And once you're finished, you can delete the localized files. So this here is where that path will go. We also have some storage settings. This is the limit of how much space localized files are allowed to take up in your machine. You can also set this value to minus hash, giving the space left on the drive instead of the maximum space to use and we have network settings. So this is how often Nuke is going to check the network uh, to see if you have any updated files. I'll change this, I think it's 30 by default. Um, and we also have some appearance settings. So these are the visual cues to display um, the status of the localized files to help you keep track. So we have the progress bar that appears on top of your read nodes, um, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. Um, and we also have the different colors for up to date in progress and out of date. Um, and those are completely customizable. You can set them to be whatever you want. Um, also worth mentioning um, is that 
if we go back real quick, um, these codes are just the base um, and they're very useful. However, through Python, um, you can build on this so you can introduce uh, more color coding within your scripts. And this is something that I'll show you a little bit later. So one more um, way of kind of managing localization is on a file by file basis. So if we go here, um, we can see that on every single read node um, that goes for read geo as well, we have the localization policy. So this is where you can change it per file. <laughs> um, I'm going to change this to on demand now. Um, and what I'm going to do is press update. So we can see that the little orange bar is appearing now, which means localization is in progress. Um, and one thing that you notice is that if you were to start playing back, the localization will pause. And this is entirely intentional um, and is there to make sure that localization is not interfering with uh, your playback performance and stability. Um, so if we pause this, uh, we can see localization keeps going. Um, so another thing that you can do is if you do want to pause temporarily, you can just go to cache localization and press pause. Um, this pauses all localization processes. Um, if we had multiple, all of them will be paused. Um, in case you ended up deciding that, you know what, I don't want these files to be localized anymore, um, we also have the option to clear the cache. So we would go and switch this to off. Um, and then we would navigate to cache localization um, and go clear unused local files. Um, so once we do this, um, this is the path where the files will be deleted from, uh, which we set up a little bit earlier. Um, and this is the files that have been copied over to this directory. The files that are on the original network are going to be completely untouched and just the cache is going to be cleared. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, as you might have noticed up here, um, we have some more options. So we also have access to the modes. Um, this mirrors the uh, options in the preferences as well. So we have on, manual, and off. Um, and whatever you switch to here uh, is going to be uh, the same in preferences and vice versa. And we also have the force update option. Um, so I'm going to go and select these three files right here. And I want to localize them. So um, I'll go say, okay, localize, force update, selected. Um, you also have the option for on demand only. So if you have um, a bunch of files that are set to localization policy on demand, um, this is the option with which you can force update them. So I'll just press select it for the minute. And unsurprisingly, localization is happening, which is fantastic. Um, one thing you notice is that this first file right here did not get localized. Um, however, that is because the localization policy for it is set to off. So whatever is set to off is never going to be localized regardless of um, whether everything is turned on automatically or you're just force updating it. One other cool thing to mention is that localization works across different comp versions as long as the files haven't changed. So for example, if we go right here and say these are our final lighting renders, we know that we're not going to get any more. Um, so this is the final bits we'll be working with. What you can do is you can localize once um, and then you can keep iterating your comps and saving new comp versions as you keep revising um, as you go along and the localization is going to carry across those different comp versions. One thing to mention quickly, um, MOV and red files do not display progress bars during localization. Um, so if you're working with those and you don't see them, um, it's just not meant to. One other cool thing um, is that if you do have uh, files where you know you're going to keep getting new versions, um, you can set this up to be more automatic. So if you're working on a comp and you know that you're going to keep getting updates from lighting, um, what you can do is you can go and set your mode to on. Um, and then if we go in the file itself, we can set this to on as well. So the localization fires up automatically. Um, and say you're working on your comp and then halfway through, um, you uh, someone tells you that you have a new update of your renders. So what you can do is you just version up um, and then the localization happens automatically uh, since we've set this to on.
Another thing to mention um, is the out-of-date progress bar. So it's red um, or whatever color you set it to be. Um, so what I've done here is I have this footage um, and I have a few frames that I want to change um, or, you know, um, I've decided that I don't want to version up. I just want to override uh, the frames and keep the same names. So I've done a color correct and I've rendered with the exact same name. So the files have been overwritten and then um, you kind of catches that. So these files that are right here, this is still um, our original footage that we localized initially. However, Nuke is telling you that there exists um, an updated version. So this is what the red bar is for. Um, if we go to preferences, um, and we uh, click on read source files when localized files are out of date. What happens is um, you see this bar right here, change. So what this is doing is um, Nuke is letting you know that now it's reading directly off the network. Um, so if just press OK, um, and if we go back, we can see that there's a bit of a difference in the grade. Um, and these are the source files that are being read off the network. Um, if we were to then press update, um, it will localize again, um, and that will be our data um, up to date. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, um, which I think is quite cool, um, is a quick script. So I'm going to go to the script editor real quick. Um, and we have, oh, this is actually the wrong one. Um, I will load the correct script. So it's this. Um, and I'm just going to run it really quickly. And what I'm going to do now is earlier we set a path uh, to localize from. So I'm going to go in and read in some footage. Right. And as you can see, those instantly look different. So this is what the script is doing. Um, it's kind of color coding the entire read container um, just to have a better uh, visual representation of what's going on. So for all the different statuses, we have different colors. Um, green, obviously, for localized. For in progress, uh, we have orange. Um, and for example, if I were to pause this now, it would change again. Um, and this would mean that something is partially localized. If we were to switch this to off, then it will turn blue. So for any files, for example, that you know you never want to have localized, um, you can switch to off um, and then they'll be bright blue or whatever color you would like them to be um, and just stand out. So this is just a really quick and simple way to kind of build on um, the progress bar options um, and just have your script visually speak to you um, in order to be able to keep things a little more organized. We have a very similar script for Nuke Studio as well. If we jump in here real quick, we have our timeline and we have our clips and just imagine this is a lot bigger and more complex. So what we have is the script that I was talking about. If I just run it, go to cache um, and force update all. What you see is that the clips are changing colors right away and you have uh, the different statuses. So this is another visual way of keeping track. If you have a huge timeline, you can really benefit from customizations like this. You can find what you need really easily and quickly, uh, as well as use it to drive other processes. So Python scripts can be very powerful for integrating localization into your pipeline through callbacks and you can create a set of rules to control when and how localization happens. We also have some documentation on the callbacks available in the Python dev guide for Nuke and Hero, which you can find online. And if you want to take a look at the script that we just used, it's right here. I will leave it on for a few seconds. And you know, you can just take this and experiment, uh, make your own. I have one more um, cool handy script that I want to show you. And again, it's quite simple, but it is very handy. So it's um, localized reads by type. What I'm going to do is I'll just run this real quick. And what you see happen is that both of these deep read nodes that we have right here are beginning to localize right away. So what the script is doing is um, it's looking through the entire scene 
um, and just picking out all the deep reads. So if you had more, it would select all of them and it would force update uh, all of them to localize. And this is quite handy because you can have uh, rules like this, uh, but for say different file types, uh, for different versions, this is really just something quite simple, but we have the extended Python API just for things like these. Um, so you can kind of customize localization to suit your needs um, and make the most out of it. Uh, one more thing that I want to mention um, is the um, environment, environment variable nuke localization num watchers. So this is particularly valuable when you're working over a high capacity network. Um, this controls the number of simultaneous file checks and allows you to improve performance uh, when you're working with large scripts over a high capacity network. So what we found is that um, checking the status or force updating a large number of reads or very big sequences can create kind of a bottleneck as Nuke is evaluating these files. So to improve this, we've added an option to increase the number of file checks that can occur at once um, to kind of speed up this process if you have the appropriate network configuration. So what this means is if your network is fast enough, you now have the option to um, increase the numbers of files that are being checked at the same time and kind of let more through um, so you don't uh, get stopped by this bottleneck. So one last thing that I wanted to talk about is um, something that we've added in 11.3 v2. We've added a new Python example, which you can find in the Python dev guide for a new and hero and it monitors the localization status. So um, this can be found, um, this goes in the localization panel. Um, and as you can see, uh, you have the same modes as you do in uh, the tab menu and uh, preferences. You have the force update, the pause, and clear unused local files, as well as clear all local files, which is quite handy, as well as um, viewing things depending on their localization status and you have direct access to the preferences themselves as well. Um, so one of my favorite things about this new thing is the option to select multiple clips and set the localization mode on a few kind of in a batch. So you no longer have to jump in and do it file per file. You can just select a few um, and apply this. So we can just set this to on. And you can see it's going straight away. Um, it's, it's really handy. Um, and then if you decide you want to go back, you still have your um, files that are on demand. Um, you can go ahead and um, you can just force update them. So if we switch this manual um, and force update on demand only, uh, localization is happening and it's a very good way to keep track um, of what's happening. So this is, uh, this is also something that you can kind of tweak. So you can have the thumbnail, file name, version, clip name, and status. So you can customize this as well to show only the information that you actually need. Um, and this is how uh, this looks in Nuke Studio, um, but it looks pretty much the same in Nuke. Um, yeah, you also have the option to do, uh, to clear and use local files just as you normally would. And the other cool thing is um, that you also have the option to um, clear all localized files. So once you're finished with your project, you don't necessarily want any of them. So what you can do is just go ahead and clear all, and then you're finished, and those files are not taking up any more info on your drive. And this is pretty much it. Before the Q&A, I just want to thank 1920, Aaron Sims Creative, and Ari Rubenstein for the footage and letting us use it. And I want to thank you all for joining. Um, I hope after this you have a better understanding of what localization is and how it could help your workflows, as well as maybe have some cool ideas about using Python and callbacks to your advantage when working with localization. If you do, let us know, show us, we definitely love to see. And if you have any questions now, feel free to ask. Thanks.